Sorry. Sorry about that. I must be Hi there, this is John Solari from the Method Actor Speaks with part two. And we're going to start all over again. Introduce yourself and what's your character? Hi, Raphael Morafa as producer of the short film Eternal Waltz. Cindy Marin Angel, uh, I executive produced, wrote, uh, acted, and did costumes and props all along with Torsten and Lori and, and Raphael for the Eternal Waltz. <laughs> I'm Thorsten Becker, hi, and I'm scriptwriter, actor, executive producer, costumer, <laughs> and the number, uh, the guy of the numbers, the, the budgeting was my... And soon to be called on law. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Ryan Gilbert, I was an actor in the film. Smokey Miles, I played the character named Smokey, which made it very easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I played accordion and was the tarot card reader. <laughs> I'm Lori Lampson. I co-wrote the script with Cindy and Torsten, and I directed, and, and I'm going to be produce. editing. And helped produce. And I helped a lot with the pre-production. Well, I got a feeling you all helped produce it. So, Cindy, you guys wanted to talk about something beside 1881 that Ron brought up mm -hmm. before. Well, it is an 11-page <laughs> script, and seven of the pages or so were focused on 1881, and I think it was written really beautifully. What originally happened is we overwrote the short. And we popped not only into 1881, but into present time, and then into the post-apocalyptic future with some um, sort of in-between lifetime uh, scenes in between. And we ended up finally at a production meeting going, how are we going to get this all into a 15-minute short? And we decided to save the modern time for our feature script, which we're also working on. Oh, and what, what does that have? How does, I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? What it's like? Sorry, you want to take that? Yeah, well, that was them kind of with their roles reversed from the 1881 times where um, she's a waitress and Torsten's character is given the music box by Smokey. He's like now the rich successful guy rather than a butler but he's, he's missing something. He's, he's lonely. He, find, he gets this music box, he goes into the restaurant and he tries to connect with her but now she's kind of got this hard edge. The idea was that she was broken in the 1881 time, and now she needs some love to heal. And that part, we were working on it, we're developing it, and we really like it. It kind of, it needed more. It, we were giving it short shrift, the whole scene. There were so many levels to it, and it wasn't going to all fit into a short film, uh, with also the post-apocalyptic yeah. future. So we decided to take that part out and just have the simpler post-apocalyptic future section. To show yeah, that I think love it, goes on. Yeah, it, with the in-between lifetimes. And that was more than enough to bite off for a short film. It's very, very ambitious for a short film to create four different worlds. It's not just like we're going to go to another location across town, but it's still in the same time period. This is the past, the future, and some place that no one's ever, that no one really knows about, that we've created with our imagination. We shot two days in Beverly Hills in uh, a mansion. We shot a day in the desert, way, way out. Uh, Buddy Daniels Friedman, who was our first AD, loaned us some property way out in the desert. We were happy to find a shack that we could use yes. and it tarp worked off. perfectly. <laughs> and, then, yeah. uh, and then we shot two days in my home and also out in a park shooting some of the malt scenes. Uh, so, and A big part of what made it work, creating these different worlds, was the cinematography and the lighting. So we were lucky to get um, a cinematographer I've wanted to work with for a long time. His name's Peja Radinkovic. He's Bosnian. So we had a very international <laughs> cast and crew. And I've worked with him before, and we had talked about how we both have a similar taste in surreal, magical things. So when they liked his reel, I thought he might really work for this. And first thing he said was, well, I, I only wanted to work on things I really like. So send me the script, and I'll let you know. And I, he's like, nothing personal if I don't like it. And then, like a half an hour later, he emailed me, Oh my God, Lori, I love it, call me immediately. <laughs> really? And he just really got, he, he loved the challenge of the different worlds and the different lifetimes. How important is that to you as a director to have a DP that you trust? It, it what about one you don't trust? What is that like? Well, this is probably the most ambitious thing I've done, and I was happy to have someone that had worked on feature films that knew his way around shooting and a crew. He had a wonderful crew. Yes. They made me feel yeah. very really cool. taken care of. We had his own day. people. Yeah. Great. That's, that was the idea. I wanted him to hire, bring his own people that he's used to working with. Yeah. And he really picked them well. They were very sweet. Mm -hmm. They really were happy about the project. They enjoyed it. They really gave a lot. I he guess the most important 
person is really the, the editor and the DP on the film. I always go up and say hello to them when I work <laughs> and I get a chance because it's really, it's their, their final. Yeah. The director tells them what to do, but they're the ones that do it. We had a great collaboration. He really yeah. understood the story. He understood what we were trying to do. And, you know, we talked in advance about the look and the lighting ideas for all, for each section. And so he really, he I could tell he thought about it, and then he came prepared to the and set. With you ideas. wrote it with, and when she's talking about lighting, is the director and, and your, do you guys collaborate, or is it, who's in charge? <laughs> Who has the last, the final word? That's a good question. <laughs> I think there were a few people in charge because everybody, even though there was a single vision, uh, people were very individual in how they wanted to make this happen. Yeah. So again, the melding of each of the individuals. I mean, at a certain point, we had to step back and be actors. Yeah. And thank God we had Raphael and Lori on uh -huh. set to let us do that and to handle fielding a lot of the questions because, you know, the act, when you're also producing, uh, you know, and you're the writer, it's like at one point I was like, I'm, I'm like lying down on the couch. Can I say something as the writer? You know, <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> you're, you're taking hats off and on, but we needed that time to be actors yeah. and they allowed yeah. us that time. You, you have to give that over. At a certain point. Yeah, and I thought Ron uh, was very instrumental because he threw some questions at me about what was happening, and I said, "Look, it's it's here, you know. Uh, whatever the situation is, is what you have to make happen for yourself and for others." It was a very giving, giving, it, yeah. a very yeah. giving opportunity for a lot of people and you know uh, I think the most important thing is uh, the audience is very sophisticated is more sophisticated and intelligent than what a lot of people think cinema is all about so I think it's uh, it was a very important piece because people will get what is on the screen you don't have to promote it uh, you know, the people will see well, you and they'll hope say, they'll get it. we get it. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, audience, so. the audience is more sophisticated than uh, people give a lot of credit, yeah. give, you know, people give credit to. I'm also thinking, and when, when you're talking about Ron, well, Ron has learned from some of the best in the world about every, and Cindy too, have learned from the best of the whole, cool. what goes on in every aspect. And I was just wondering what it's like for studio members to work with non-studio members, the different styles of acting. Did you find anything in the actors, if you want to talk about it, what it was like working with, you know, the way we work at the studio? Well, the thing about it, Zorst, he's the character. He's the character. Okay. So it was very easy, you know, he, he presented it. So he was right on line. I didn't think about, oh, you know, what is he working on? And so that was very easy. Um, you know, the, the advantage I did have is I had work, I was working on a, a Russian play for a couple of weeks, playing a character from that same period. So it was kind of like a week later playing. So it was really sort of a, a nice transition. But you know, the, the thing about you, know, there's a collaboration. And you know, my thing, and I, I feel like this, because you can come up with an idea, but I, Cindy wants something, Lori wants something. They want something. And I can come up with a choice, but I have to make sure, and this is even when I do television, what do you want? Right. What do you want here? <laughs> I can give you everything. What do you And they tell me what, that's what they're going to get. Right. Because they know what's going to work in the story. And that's, so as an actor, you find the way to do it. How do so you maybe find I don't that? Talk to well, that's interesting. How do you find that? Um, I just able to go into it. I mean, it's you know one of the things I didn't talk to her. I was not nice to her. Now it wasn't. Nothing. 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 I was like, what's wrong? With <laughs> she, you know, coming in there. What's wrong with you? No. <laughs> but you had to be. So it helps. You know, 
Tony, Tony, a lot of actors are doing it. Tony Lorbianco. Remember he used right, to play from the early in the morning, he'd play the guy and all that yeah. stuff. And the view from the bridge. Yeah. Right. And, but, you know, when he would, yeah. you know, so. And I've worked with Smokey a ton, you know, and he's a blast and he's easy to work with. And Torsen's very well trained from mm -hmm. Europe. He went to school. What kind of training? That's interesting. Now, what you're training in Europe. Actually, I was discovered by a German actress. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Her name was Renata Manhart. Okay. She, and she was a German actress in the Olympic thing. And she discovered me in 1967 in a bar in the village. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true, the village corner. Oh, the village corner. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 for weeks she was after me, and I thought, you know, she wants to pick me up. <laughs> she asked me to audition, and I did. I won a scholarship, and I wound up living with her. Wow. Okay. I always liked all the women. You know. But, uh, <laughs> No, I, I got a professional education at the uh, European Film Actor School in Zurich. Ah. So we had partly some method acting influence in our um, classes. Did it help you? Or what oh, you totally, in? totally. I, I could use whatever I learned in my, in my classes and my lessons in, in Zurich. And I was happy that I got this backpack here on set. And actually, for me, the, one of the challenges was uh, the English language. And I mean, I, I can speak English, but if it comes to get your emotions and do your acting and That's all that on top, your brain, some part of your brain is still dealing with another language. This was a challenge, but a part of that, I, I did not see a huge difference because when they changed the camera, for example, Ron came to me, hey, come on, let's, let's do some lines, let's, let's get through our uh, dialogue. It kept you alive. Um, right, uh, let's, let's roll it. And then the camera was moved, and then, okay, let's go. And then I think we did some great tension. That's an interesting camera. thing, especially for the director and the <clears throat> DP, because here you're transforming the feelings, the words and the feelings, and they're not matching. Is that true? What, what I'm hearing you say, you've got to think about what that feeling, you know, that word means to you, and then feel it. Well, I try, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm trying to say there? That it, I'm saying it's the opposite. One take to another. Maybe the opposite, excuse me? Carrying forward the same feeling from one take to another. Yeah, well, I mean, like he said, the, the language part. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're interpreting the words in English, then you've got to transform them back into German so you really, um, truly understand well, it. Every, every actor has its own secret how to act. And... I won't tell my secrets, no, but no, it's, no. It's, 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 a, it's clear that first there is a thought, and the thought triggers your voice, triggers the right. word. Right. So all I did, I went through this process, and at the end it was an English word, an English line instead of a German line. But all the rest was the same. What, what's, what's moving me? What is inside me? What is my love to... To, to the other characters. How is the hatred to Mr. Cody to run? What, what, is, what is the situation? I always try to play the situation and not what is written in the text. Because the text, the audience will know anyway. Because I tell the text. So everything I did for myself was in German. Only the, the very end of the process was an English word, an English line. And sometimes I messed up. <laughs> it's okay. I'm 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 okay. i that's when you're really working together. People are saying, this is good. Yeah. Okay, right. good interruption. Exactly. Good. Could it have been because when you, you were anticipating the line, and all of a sudden you get the wrong line, and you have to react to that. And this That's, is what mm -hmm. acting is all about. Right, yeah. he's to reacting. To fresh, right. because the character never knows the future. Yes, that's a great so point, the, Ron. So the actor does, and I think when you cross yeah. my lines, right. it was a moment of, Oh, now I have to think, I have to ah. react, I have it's to... A it's a real moment. It's a real moment. It's a real moment, right. yes. Yeah, right. it's this is all about acting. That's what acting is all about. To be in the moment and to be real in the moment. And not to anticipate yeah. the next line. 
And Smokey had the most lines, actually, of anybody. Yeah, really? Smokey, come on. Is that right? Yes, you had more lines than anybody in the whole film. Unbelievable. Smokey just, just said that. Like, you no, know, it didn't seem like a lot to me, and that's why, you know, at the, the first day, it was like not getting the lines right. And then, uh, then it snapped in, I don't know. And I, I mean, I'm used to doing a lot of lines. I've done like a one-man show. I played Bob Dylan in San Francisco, which was like, He's a know, great guitar. I could see dialogue. that in you. Yeah, I could see you. You know, yeah. Bob Dylan. Yeah, yeah, good Bob Dylan, yeah. I think the biggest thing, Smokey, was that you started to have fun at a certain point. Yeah, you know? I did, yeah. 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 Wow. And that matters. I mean, we wanted, that's what we wanted from you was your yeah. excite, you know, your like kind of mischievousness. Those real moments, yes. There was a lot of excitement. Today on During the Classic, they're playing all the uh, Shelley Winters movies. Uh -huh. And I always tell actors, I say it on camera, in front of the camera, the best advice I ever got as an actor at Actors Studio, when Shelley Winters told me, sit down, John, you're acting. <laughs> <laughs> best advice I ever got as an actor. Yeah. I think, yeah, what, I think what Raphael was starting to say, too, is that at the end, what was really cool, especially from our viewpoint of the creators, was people came away and went, oh my God, edit this. Like, we can't wait to see this. Like, we really think we've got something here. So to have the crew and people be excited, it's a little short film, it was low budget. I mean, people didn't get paid a lot of money. I mean, everyone got something, but people were there for the passion of what we were creating. Yeah. And everyone yeah. gave 120%. Yeah, when we went over time and, you know, I mean, everyone just stayed and was like plowing through it. And I think everyone's excited about it. Can I ask you something now, as actors, do you remember those moments that were what you did? Mm -hmm. You do? Some, right? some, the yes. moments that really some. worked, did you, do you remember them? I know what you're talking uh, about. Sometimes you can get into something and then you walk away and you go, I have no idea what I just did. I remember the moment, you know, a moment when something just kind of, it, it fell into the groove. Yeah. And then I felt like that was the character that I'm playing. Because she's right. I, at my final, I did Frankie and Johnny. Until this day, I don't remember what I right. did. Right. Yeah, there's, there's points, right. I have no idea. Or they say, repeat did. that, that was great. And you're like, what did I do? Can we roll that back? I have no idea. And then continuity pops up. Uh, was it the left or the right arm? Or what is the... I, I had one really great moment, I thought. Uh, and there's a couple of photos when Cindy was coming out from makeup. And she had this long dress. And she's dragging the dress, and I kind of picked it up from the back, and we marched to the front. I had such a great time, I, it took me back to that era. Where so that was my moment, but it wasn't on camera. It was only a couple of stills. It was really cute. It was super cute. Everybody helps. <laughs> they had a lot of good moments with the vegetarian. Craft services. Oh, yeah. we, is that what you had? Yeah. Vegetarian? Well, Group is terrific. She's a. Group Devlin, Real Devlin. Amazing time. Yeah, really yeah her and her husband. Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing keeps the show moving, you know. People are happy. I mean, it was better yeah. catering than <laughs> big budget. I mean, the catering was amazing. It was almost Thank meatless. <laughs> it was. It was pretty much. She snuck some chicken in the last day. I was not yes. happy. Yeah. But 99.9% <laughs> <laughs> really? vegetarian. Hey, all of you are no. into that? No. We are, yeah. and we were paying for it. So really? Oh, it so we <laughs> no, well, she made me a Thai omelet one morning. Ah, she said that. She asked if I wanted it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> now Everybody I know. Everybody jumped in on that. <laughs> Nobody, I don't think anyone minded no, what was, was, exactly. they were don't. being fed. It's just... Everybody's still alive at least. <laughs> still alive. <laughs> it was a major portion yeah. of the budget because she brought a lot. I mean, I've been on indie films and, you know, they don't have food like, like that. Mm -hmm. Someone cooking all day and she had so many... Handmade. How big was the whole cast and, and you know, including... You, your background people in this. Thing. Our biggest day was 28, and that was the first day we shot. We did the biggest day first. It was like, Dush! and after that, it was just Torsten and I and, and Smokey one other day. So after that, but the cast that, was, was only 10. The cast was 10. Yeah. Now, was when you, you know, I, the question I have, I was thinking about you, as a director working with a, a, you know someone from a different country, and this, the communication, was it easy or? Difficult or? I thought it was easy. I know sometimes he had trouble understanding exactly what I was trying to say, but we got. How do you help someone good. like that as so a director? We, I, I really worked with him the same way I work with American actors, talking about 
where you're coming from, what is going on inside of you, what you're trying to accomplish. And we also worked with the blocking, which I think helps a lot. I'm very interested in the blocking, helping tell the story, and I think it also helps actors. Why to do you be think blocking to be inside? Blocking in the in the place is so important as a director. Why? Yeah, why is it important? Well, visually, it helps tell the story to the audience, emotionally, psychologically, and I think it also helps the actors. Like we have the scene where Mr. Koenig and James have a confrontation, and she's right in the middle. Mm. Cindy's character is right in the middle, and you know, watching this and having her own reactions to what they're saying. And, it's, and we're stuck, we stuck the camera in a little alcove because when we had it in a, a bigger space, it was showing um, a light switch. And the DP said to me, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know how to hide that. I'm like, why don't we go inside? The thing, we agreed, that is great because it was also great for the blocking and storytelling because we're stuck in there and it's happening right in front of us in this kind of dark foyer. It really worked well. What was fun, we, were, we, we had to renegade a shot because we kept trying to find a desert property that we could shoot at night with, you know, f lights and all of that. And in the end, we, we went through like everybody we could know and all these different scenarios. And in the end, we just ran out at, the, at night to a park nearby and we were all filming and, and at the end, cops came. <laughs> Right? And so my answer to everybody was like, nobody speak any English. Torsten and Peja start talking another language. <laughs> <laughs> languages, yeah. <laughs> Thank God the cop rolled by, but we were like, ah, oh, that was our plan. They didn't bother yeah. us. We were lucky we had one more shot. They came up, turned around. I said, it's just a scare tactic. We turned off the lights. They drove back down the hill. We turned the lights back on. I, we did another shot and wrapped up. I think it was the nice Viennese walls they saw. Uh, and yeah. no guns and no drama. It was just yeah. a nice couple dancing in white clothes. A nice meeting. It was gentle, yeah. So the cops are okay there. Oh, it's cute. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I think we all felt very gifted about what we were given. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, certain things happened. And, yeah. you know, we kind of said, oh, wow. Oh, this is happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. This is happening. Oh, this is okay. And the cops are coming, and the cops turn around and they leave. <laughs> that was our gift. <laughs> Because I have, my, I have my computer in my hands, and here goes my life. My $2,000 computer is going to be at the police station. And the only <laughs> thing was they went up, turned around, they probably said, there's too many to arrest. Let's just get out of here. And it's close it's to coffee ones. break. We can't yeah. break them. Yeah. That's right. And Lori was gifted a, uh, she won a, a lighting package that saved us. If we, we wouldn't have had the lights that we had if Lori we had donated that. Yeah. Yeah. We that needed a beautiful, uh, ambitious lighting package to uh, pull off what we were trying to do with these different lifetimes and the pastime. And I, yeah, I was given a $1,500 award like a few weeks before the production. Congratulations. <laughs> of yeah. lighting, so lighting, I cool. donated it to the... And here's another crazy production. story. We couldn't find a, a music box that played the Eternal Waltz, the Blue Danube, the, uh, yeah, by Johann Strauss. And so my mother, six months before this film even came about, had ordered one and gave it to us for Christmas, and we were like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, we looked for six months or something, and it was she had bought it already. So things just kept... And she didn't know. She didn't know. She didn't know that was the song. She didn't know. She or that we needed a music box. No. Nope. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy little things. There was a gift of talent. There was a gift of locations. There was a gift of catering. Mm -hmm. And there was a gift of giving. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think we're putting out a beautiful message. Of hope oh, and that's love. What, that's what I was thinking. You, we have about positive. five minutes left. And I want to know, where do you want to go with this? Where do you see this going? We're putting it in every festival we can, <laughs> for sure. But you said you, wanted, you were talking about a feature. And we're going to write the feature. And that's the goal, is to walk around at the festivals. When people say we love it, we'll, you know, we're looking for investors for the feature. Then there's so many festivals today. Well, Ron, you're involved in... Yeah, and, in, uh, and he's, you know, he lived in Zurich, and I know the Swiss and the, the Germans, and they've got a lot of things here. I will approach so, the German-speaking market, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they really would like it. It's, it has that good feel. I mean, I really think that they can really... It's a good it. showcase of what we want the feature to be. I think the short was yeah. shot at a very high level, mm -hmm. and I think that it's it shows everyone, hey, this is what our potential is, and this is what we can do, and this is what our vision is. Come on aboard. Well, the photo reminded me of like PBS, you know, downstairs Abbey and all the Downton uh, Abbey, you know, which I watch all the time. As soon as I see something in that, 
that, that period. My neighbor. You know, I watch it. <laughs> I just think that it's, uh, it's a, a piece of cinema that everyone involved would be very proud of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people that watch it would people enjoy. Well, John, the thing is, is that this is a different kind of film. Well, what do you it's mean by like that? A, it's not contemporary. That's well, okay, and that's gonna be that's gonna make it rise yeah. because it's not contemporary film. Everybody just you know broke up with his girlfriend. He has a drug problem. Right. You know this is people go, whoa, is this is this a feature? They're gonna look at the way this is shot. They're gonna think this is this a trailer for a feature? That's what's gonna that's what's gonna get people. Is that what you're hoping for the, the, I think to get that projection. reaction? That it's Absolutely. this is a, you know a trailer yeah. and. Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you not? Short film first. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Short film first, things first. Right. Short yes. film first, feature in the future. Mm -hmm. I think the short is going to stand alone. When, is, yeah. when can we expect to, to maybe see this? Well, we're actively seeking donors for our yes. post-production. <laughs> <laughs> is there a website or where the people can go? And we're on Facebook. We do have a website. On yes, Facebook, which you I have actually it? have not in mind, but if you go to Facebook and type in Eternal Walls, you will find everything. Facebook Eternal Walls. Eternal Facebook Eternal Walls. Eternal Walls, and there you will have a link to our webpage of okay. Angel Maker. And I think Smokey would probably sell his accordion. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that true? To, to, to raise He's back there shaking his head. 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 Auction it, to mean, to auction it off. Right. For somebody. Hey, yeah, maybe <laughs> Smokey will serenade you. Auction it. <laughs> <laughs> so and what so we'll do is we'll, idea, so if anybody needs an accordion player, we've got the guy. Oh, we got him. He also does donations. I, actually, I gotta say that a big article in the LA Times yesterday about how popular accordions accordion are. Accordion really yes. are. They, they really come back. Big time. Actually, my father wanted me to play one. I said, no, it's too heavy. I ain't got that. <laughs> Smokey did our soundtrack for us. He, we got him in to play the Blue Danube with our uh, music box, as well as Alone, and that's what we choreographed to, and we're going to have as our main theme. He did a good job. Now, that's, music is very important to a, a film. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. I was at the, I, I'm very involved in the union now, and I was over with the singers, and, and when I went to see the new movie with the, that, um, which is Henry Jagger just made, uh -huh. and the opening, and he had Nat King Cole singing, mm. which just blew me away. I'm a big fan, but the sound was so great. The lucky thing is oh. that the Blue Danube is, you know, it's past all of the time frame where you have to pay for the rights. Yeah, <laughs> public domain. That's public, public domain. domain. Yeah, thank God. That's what you look for now. Yeah. So then, yeah. Because and. When you were talking about you were working on the character, the same she won the Academy Award with what's her name, the British actress who won for Kate Blanchett, the, but she's not British. I mean, she had just done Yeah, you know she had, she had toured in Streetcar People Streetcar, don't know that. really, and if you watch the movie, as soon as I saw it, it I said she it. should win the Oscar. You know, I'm a big yeah. Woody Allen yeah. fan. Yeah. She but did all that. So it's it's so nice to see nice work. So hopefully this, you mean you need money to put get it distributed. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, raised what we could for the film itself and went a little over and we're looking for a little post-production and then, of course, for the actual film itself. So. Well, there's fees to submit to festival. Mm -hmm. That does not look yeah. so cheap. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But there's some people that I know that you can, you can call them and Great. So that's what we have to do. Network. You have now to use the relationships you have with people and say, listen. I mean, Locarno would be a great festival for this mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. Really? A European festivals would love it. I think even the ones here, Seattle would love it. I mean, it's really, Berlin. you know, it depends the timing when it comes out and what festival is going on. Yeah. She could make Toronto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? so many of them. I mean, maybe, but, well, it's hard to finish if it can, you know. But I think overall, I just have to say I'm proud of everybody and thank you for all coming aboard. And yeah, well, no, thank you guys best. for coming. Yeah. 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 This, this was really a, a lot of fun. This was really a gift, and we, you got about a few seconds, so I just want to, once again, they go just tell us how people can get in touch with you. Go to Facebook and look up Eternal Walls. We are also um, operating under Angel Baker Productions, and that's where you can find more information as well about that. And um, is there a telephone number that you have you, to call? You can, well, you can 
Contact us also on our private Yeah, internet. you can go to cindymarinangel.com. We have a lot of information there. Or thorstenbecker.info. Dot info, there's information there. Director, so, do you have one too? Do you, so people Lori? get... Yeah, I have a site, jazzymaymedia.com. Say that a little more slowly. J-A-Z-Z-Y. M-A-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com. Okay. And Lori.